In this chapter, we will walk through the creation of a landscape area, utilizing both the landscape tool directly, as well as converting existing objects into landscape areas, we will explore the creation methods for this tool. Let's start by creating a landscape area using the tool itself. The landscape area tool is located in the site planning tool set. Before we look at each of the modes, notice the landscape area resource selector in the toolbar. Similar to hardscapes, predefined landscape area styles can be saved and applied to new landscape areas. Using this resource selector, a landscape area style resource can be selected from either one of the Vectorworks libraries or a custom library file. We're going to cover this option in more detail in another chapter. The first modes we see in the toolbar are similar to the plant tool. We have three initial modes, insertion, pickup, and bucket modes. The pickup and bucket modes are used to pick up settings from other landscape areas and apply those settings to a new landscape area. We will cover the landscape area settings and the use of these modes in more detail in another chapter. The first mode, insertion, uses a second set of standard poly modes similar to the hardscape tool. Let's quickly review these modes. These modes use a continuous clicking behavior. Click once to start the first segment. Click again to end that segment and begin the next. Then continue clicking to create additional segments. Changing the vertex modes in the toolbar will create different curve vertices. You can also use the O key on your keyboard to quickly switch between these modes. When using the arc vertex mode, we can set a fillet radius using the Arc Preferences button in the toolbar. This can be accessed quickly by tapping the P key on your keyboard. Note that setting a radius of zero in this dialog will give you the largest possible radius. To complete the shape of the landscape area, either click once back at the starting point to create a closed shape, or just double click in any area and the object will be closed automatically. If an edge of the landscape area needs to be hidden, use the reshape tool in the basic palette. With the hide show edges mode enabled, you can hide or show any edge. If you're not familiar with these poly modes or would like more practice, stop here and go through the freeform modeling guide. Using these different modes, we can create any shape needed for a landscape area. The last button we see here in the toolbar for the landscape area is the landscape area preferences. This button will bring up the landscape area settings dialog. Here we can set the preferences for the landscape area tool directly. We're going to go over this dialog in more detail in the next chapter. In addition to drawing the landscape area directly using the tool, we can also convert existing objects into landscape areas. Similar to hardscapes, the Create Objects from Shapes command may be used to convert a shape into a landscape area. This allows the shape to be drawn more quickly using a combination of tools and commands. For example, we can quickly trace this area using a combination of the Rectangle and Circle tools, then using the Add Surface command found in the Modify menu, we can combine the two shapes into a single object. At this point, if we take a look in the Object Info Palette, we'll see that this object is still just a polyline. What we need to do next is convert this polyline into a landscape area. To do this, simply right-click or Control-click if on Mac, and then choose Create Objects from Shapes. From the Object Type drop-down, we will see several different options, including Landscape Area. Before clicking OK, take a look at the checkboxes at the bottom. We're going to leave the Delete Source Shapes option checked. This will remove the original object after we create the landscape area. Then, after clicking OK, we will have a landscape area. Any combination of surface objects can be added together and used to create a landscape area in this way. After drawing or converting an object into a landscape area, we still have the ability to edit the shape of that area. All we need to do is double click on the landscape area. This will open the Edit Landscape Area dialog. Here we can choose to edit the settings or the path. Choosing the path 
we'll activate the Reshape tool, allowing for direct editing of the object shape. In addition to reshaping the landscape area, the Add and Clip Surface commands can also be used to change the shape of this object. We can quickly add a curved addition to this landscape area by using the Add Surface command. We just need to draw a circle overlapping the landscape area, then select both objects, and run the Add Surface command found in the Modify menu. Or, we can split this landscape area to make a cutout for this pathway hardscape using the Clip Surface command. In this case, we will first need to create a polyline that matches the shape of the hardscape. To do this, we can quickly create the shape using the Inner Boundary mode of the Polygon tool. Then, we just need to select the polyline and the landscape area, and run the Clip Surface command found in the Modify menu. We now have two separate landscape areas split by the hardscape. This will now report the correct area and plant count information. Using these different creation methods, we can quickly create any landscape area we may need. Coming up in the next chapter, we're going to take a closer look at the landscape area settings.